This is the RCA CTC35 chassis that the Flybrack transformer failed on and went up in smoke. And what I'm going to attempt to do today, because these flybacks are really no longer available, is uh, replace it with a flyback out of a Packard Bell color set. And electrically and circuit wise, these two flybacks spec out and use the same uh, exact configuration. And what I'm going to do is try and adapt this green one here, which is pretty much new old stock, to fit in place of this. Now, there's gonna some of the wires are a little bit different, so it's gonna take a little bit of modification. So the first thing I'm gonna do is photograph uh, in good detail the way this one's connected. You can see this is the original flyback from the 60s. I'm going to photograph this in, in good detail so if I forget where any of these wires connect I can refer back to the photographs. I have both flybacks removed and the physical characteristics here are pretty much identical including the pin numbering and what those pins connect to is the same and even the footprint of these things is identical. Most likely the Packard Bell was a clone of the RCA uh, high voltage circuit so they're pretty close. One one difference here is the um, on the RCA the the high voltage rectifier tube plugs directly into the top of the flyback and on the Packard Bell it uses the more standard three inch lead to go to the uh, cap of the high voltage rectifier. One challenge that I see so far with this is the wires, the filament leads for the high voltage rectifier on the RCA are much longer than the Packard Bell and this is not something you can splice because of the high voltage. Uh, this, these, these leads actually have the uh, 26,000 volts that's on the picture tube anode running through them. So this is not something that can be bought. So I'm going to have to try and remove this. It's only two turns on the bottom of this transformer. I'm going to have to try and remove this RCA lead and put it on the the Packard Bell flyback. There also might be some other lead length issues here. I won't really know until I uh, get deeper into it, but the first thing I'm going to do is try and remove the RCA uh, high voltage rectifier filament lead and put it on the Packard Bell flyback. Okay, success with that. What I did is I used the a, a heat gun to heat this up so I could pull this jacket off. Um, this jacket, this whole thing was so soaked in wax that it leaked out of that burnt transformer that this was all filled with wax and fused the wires. This jacket's important because it, it clamps into this hold down right here. And that's important to insulation to keep it from arcing. So the next thing to do here is to mount the transformer and we're going to need there's one wire that remains on the transformer and this has to be pulled through the hole and soldered underneath so the next thing is just to line all this up and see where our wire links go from here okay so we're all back mounted in the cage here and physically this flyback fits perfectly all the screw holes line up and all the tabs fit into place now it's just about getting the wires together and soldered onto the new transformer everything looks like it'll fit it's going to be pulled a little bit tight but all the existing wires do look like they will reach and fit the contacts on this flyback there's one lead this red lead you have to 
fish through the bottom, the grommet, and uh, hook to the bottom of the damper circuit, but everything else connects on top. There's just four wires to the flyback, um, three to the high volt, the focus rectifier, and the two to the high voltage rectifier, and the one to the plate cap, which comes on the flyback. So I'm almost, almost got it together here. Okay, I'm all back together here. All my tubes are back in. And you can see this is a, a little bit on the tight side, but it should be okay. My high voltage rectifier filament lines are all hooked up. Um, we're all installed here. You can see this. This is uh, one difference. And it actually the cage actually closes the cage actually closes quite nicely and it doesn't close all the way but it just closes to this point right here where that that cap sits on top of the new flyback so I'm hoping that'll shouldn't be any kind of problem there's plenty of insulation there so now to take it in and give it a try. There's a couple things I would like to mention that could be potential problems with this. I noticed the core was cracked in two places on this flyback. I don't know if it was dropped at some point, but there, I don't think that's going to affect it. And also, when I was removing that insulation from the high voltage rectifier filament, there was a small crack in the first layer of insulation on that wire. So that could potentially arc, but the second layer looked okay. So we're just going to give it a try here. And see, this is mostly just for experimentation purposes. This chassis has a ton of hours on it and uh, is well used. So I'm not expecting much other than a test to see if this flyback will work. Okay, we're ready to try it out here and see what's going to happen. I have my high voltage probe here and I also have a cathode current meter on the horizontal output tube. The These sets should run about 200 milliamps horizontal uh, cathode current. So here we go. Let's see what happens. I had to pause it because the horizontal output tube wasn't plugged in all the way. And it might not still be. Okay, here comes our cathode current. I hear high voltage. Uh, here. Okay, so we have some kind of arcing here. This could be, uh, I can't really tell where it's coming from. This could be uh, that wire that I mentioned that got was cracked because it was so old and brittle. So I'm going to pull this out and take a look. Yes, it appears that... And it's interesting how everything's glowing blue in here, but... That's where that wire, where the insulation cracked, is is uh, leaking to ground. So that's going to be a problem. I'm going to have to replace that uh, wire to the, low, the uh, high voltage rectifier filament. This is... This is a, uh, a pain right here. Okay, I ended up doing what I really didn't want to here, which was reinstalling the old uh, filament tap on the flyback, and which was new with the Packard Bell flyback, and then using a splice with heat shrink. Uh, this is really not a good way to 
put something together that's got so much such high voltage on it but hopefully it's far enough away from anything here and I put two layers of that high voltage heat shrinkable tubing hopefully it won't arc out so let's take it and give it another try okay so round two here we got the wires insulated new uh, wire put in we're gonna see what happens this time Everything's hooked up, my high voltage gauge, cathode current. Cathode current's coming up. Well, Dina's just as bad as he is. What, the mother that went on the Today Show? 120. Yes, Dina's own dream came true as well. Another appearance on the Today just Show. heard the high voltage so come up. We're about I mean, how many viewers do you have? And ratings. Looking good, right on... About 25 kilovolts. I don't hear any any staticky or arcing. A cathode current's a little bit high. It's about 200, but there is an adjustment for that. I don't have any any kind of raster yet, but that could just be another unrelated problem. So the lack of a picture was due to a bad, a dirty service normal switch. So after I cleaned that and uh, did a simple setup, a quick setup, we do have a color picture here. There's a little bit of lacking on the vertical. There could be a problem there. And also there's another issue here which could just be a bad tube. We're looking in the mirror there where if I crank the brightness up, the picture pretty much blows out and disappears. Now this this could be a bad tube or it could be an impedance mismatch with the flyback transformer. I'll have to check. The damper could be damaged. The horizontal output tube could be damaged from being run so hard under the bad flyback. Day two, we're finished and working. I had to remove the flyback and replace the core. I removed the core out of the old RCA factory uh, flyback and put it in the Packard Bell replacement. And uh, we're looking good here. It also required a grayscale setup. I'm running about 207, 208 milliamps cathode current in the... Uh, manual says 210 uh, is ideal so we're under that also putting this back together I've left this gap I put the can at the top so that the cap on the tube was not resting directly on the flyback donut and I left this I left the the shield up at the top of the screws here so that this uh, gives it a little air, a little breathing, extra breathing room. Our picture looks pretty good. It's pretty bright and pretty sharp. It does have a little vertical problem down here at the bottom, but that will be, that's something unrelated that I have to work out. Take a look here can see that everything looks good except the vertical problem. And uh, the horizontal linearity looks pretty good. The color colors look really good. And this is uh, for setup here you can Turn the colors on and off one at a time. So there's blue, there's green, there's red. All three together equal white. There's a staircase. So that's it. Our flyback replacement going from a RCA 
factory flyback to a 60s Packard Bell flyback.